Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this cowl here. Now I permanently sewed my piece up so it slips on and off your head and you don't have to um, re-fiddle with it every time that you want to put it on. But that's not anything that you have to do. You can leave it unsewn and it's a big rec it's just a rectangle. And I teach you how to fold it to make this cowl. And you can put some like buttons on it to where, you know, all the way down, however you want to do it. And unbutton it each time, you know, however you want to do it. But uh, this one is permanently sewn, so it will just go on and off your head. And you don't have to um, refold it every time, but either way is fine. Um, and I just put that brush on there for decoration. So the size, since this is already sewn and folded, um, I did measure before. The size of my rectangle uh, before I so so sewed it permanently it was 12 or 12 and a half inches um in width and then it was approximately 41 inches long so you want to shoot for something like that uh in size okay for the yarn that i use for this project is um the caron macchiato cakes it's a 80 acrylic 20 wool blend um and it's classified as a bulky five but it's a thin bulky five so i you could get away with a four weight as well you could actually use any size that you wanted um of yarn or any type of yarn um because i'm going to give you the multiple and you can just chain to you know the the 12 inches and make it as long you know the 41 inches long whatever size yarn that you want you don't have to use this one but uh, for this particular one, which is a thinner bulky five, pretty much pretty close to a four weight yarn, there's 481 yards and I used almost a whole cake. So you're probably going to need about 475 yards um, to complete this uh, cowl. And the color that I used was not this one, but it was called Soulful. It was the blue and gray but you use any yarn and any color that you would like. And then, um, for that particular four weight or thinner bulky five yarn, we're gonna be using a size J, which is a six millimeter crochet hook. If you're gonna be using a different size yarn, um, other than a four weight or a thinner bulky five, I would use the hook recommendation on the label. So we're going to go ahead and start out. So this stitch is called the ocean wave stitch and it's done in a multiple of four plus two in case you want to uh, use this stitch for something else or change the size of what I just made. So following along with me. With a slip knot on your hook. I started with a chain of 50 for mine. So 48 was my multiple of four. And then I added two more to the base chain for a total of 50, 50 chains. But remember you can do yours bigger or smaller. Just remember that you need a multiple of four plus two. All right, so I'm gonna show you on a smaller scale, but once you get your chain of 50, what we're gonna do is single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. And remember we never count the one that's on our hook. So in that second stitch, we single crochet and then we're going to single crochet one single crochet in every stitch of the chain. Just like this. So one single in every stitch until you get to the end of the row. All right, when you make it to the end of row one, following along with me, you should have a total of 49 stitches. Okay, let's go ahead and start row two. We're gonna chain one and turn our work. Now we're gonna go back into this very, very first stitch here, and we're gonna work three double crochets into that very first stitch. So there's one, two, And three just like that and then we are going to skip three stitches so skip 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 
one, two, three, and we are going to single crochet into the next. This starts the repeat of row two. Now we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and we're going to go back into that same stitch that we just single crocheted in, and we're going to work three double crochets into that same stitch. So there's one, two, and there's three. Again, we're going to skip three stitches, skip, 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 and the next one, we're going to single crochet, and then we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and we're going to go back into that same stitch and work three double crochets in the same stitch that we just single crocheted into. So there's one, two, and three. And we repeat that again, skip three, skip, 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 single into the next, chain three, one, two, three, go back into the same spot, and three doubles into that same stitch. And we're going to repeat this pattern until we get near the end of our row. All right, so I'm coming to the end of the row and I have four stitches that remain. I'm going to skip three, skip, 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 and a single crochet into the last stitch, and that will end row two. Now we're going to start row three. Now row three is the repeat row for the whole pattern. So yep, it is just a one row repeat and it's very, very easy to do. And it looks very beautiful. So row three. We're going to chain one and turn our work. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch and we're going to go back into this very first stitch and we're going to work three double crochets into that first stitch. There's one and two and three. Now what we're going to do is we come over here now the double crochet before the chain space, we are going to work a front post single crochet, which is very easy. Instead of working the single crochet into the top of the stitch, we're just gonna go around the post of it like that and just do a single crochet. And that's what's gonna make our stitch, uh, this stitch look a little bit uh, three dimensional, I guess. So you did your front post single crochet. Now we're going to chain three, one, two, Three, and we're going to go back into this chain space, this next chain space, and through that chain space we're going to put three double crochets. So there's one, two, and there's three. And that's what we're going to repeat. So again we're going to jump over here and the single crochet before, or the double crochet before the next chain we're going to do a front post single crochet around that. So we're just going to go around the post of it like that and do a single crochet. And then we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then go back into this chain space, which is kind of set in the back now, if you look. But in that chain space, we're going to work three double crochets. There's one. two and three and then we're going to repeat come over here to the double crochet before our next chain space and around the post of it we work a single crochet so just stick your hook right around the post of it and do a single crochet so that's a front post single crochet and we're going to chain three and then in the, into the chain space remember it's kind of set in the back now by doing that post stitch there it sets it to the back but that's the one that we need to work in and we're going to do three double crochets into that space there's one two and three now we're going to repeat this pattern until we get near the end of our row so one more time come up to your next chain space 
the double crochet right before it, you do a front post single crochet, chain three, and then the chain space that's kind of set behind it now, three double crochets through that space. One, two, and three. Now repeat that till you get near the end. All right, so I'm coming to the end of the row. Um, I just did my uh, three double crochets here into the last chain space. Now all I have left are these three stitches here. What I'm gonna do is single crochet into the top of the very last one. And that ends row three, and that is the repeat row. So let's go ahead and repeat it again. Remember, we just keep repeating row three. So we chain one and turn, and we go back into the very first stitch here, and we work three double crochets into that first stitch. There's one, two, and three. Now we're gonna jump over here to the double crochet before the next chain space, so right here, and do a front post single crochet, chain three, go into the chain space that's kind of set behind it, and work three double crochets into that stitch. One, two, three. And we, we repeat that again. Remember, we're just repeating what we did on row three. So we find the next ch chain space right here, the double crochet right before it. We do a front post single crochet. And then we chain three. And then the chain space is now a little bit behind it, but grab it and put three double crochets through that chain space. Repeat it again, come up to your next chain space, front post single crochet around the double crochet. That's right before the, the chain space, like that. Chain three, and now the chain space is set in the back a little bit, but grab it up and put three double crochets into it. And this is what we're gonna repeat until we get to the last chain space of the row. Remember, this is just a repeat of row three. more rows you do, you'll be able to start seeing it taking uh, shape. All right, I just did my three double crochets in the last chain space, and we want to end with a single crochet into the top of the very last stitch. That's it. And we just keep repeating that row. Row three, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It looks the same on both sides as well. That's always a plus. So just keep repeating that row three. All right, so I continued this pattern um, for a total of 72 rows, and that's including that very first row of single crochet we did. So 72, or until you reach approximately um, all the way down, approximately 41 inches or so. It doesn't have to be exact, but yeah, mine's hitting right about 40. 41, but somewhere in the vicinity of that, you know, <clears throat> within an inch or so is fine, I'm sure. Okay, so we're going to do one more row at the top to straighten out this edge here. So, as soon as you get yours, as long as you want it to be, if you're making something different than this with this stitch, go ahead and remember this would be the final row to straighten out this top edge. We're going to chain one, flip our work around here. So we're gonna go ahead and start by putting three double crochets into this first stitch, just like we did on the other rounds. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump to this chain, first chain space here, see this one? We're gonna work a single crochet just right through the space, like that. And then we're gonna come down here to this single crochet and we're gonna work three double crochets into that single. So 
just like that. And that's what we're going to repeat to finish off the top. So we're going to jump here to our next single crochet, just or next chain space, I'm sorry, and put a single crochet into it. So just right into it. And then down here where the single crochet is, three doubles into that space. Just like that. Again, our next chain space, go right through it, single crochet. And then down here at this single crochet, three doubles. And this is going to kind of help straighten out the top a little bit. Next chain space, single crochet into it. Next single crochet, which is right down here, three doubles. So we're going to go ahead and do this until we get near the end of the row. And as you can see, it kind of straightens it out a bit at the top there. So we got a straight edge now. All right, so I'm coming to the end here of my finishing row. I just single crocheted into my last chain three space. So I'm going to come down here to this single crochet here and do three doubles into it. Just one, two, and three. And then we're going to end this finishing row by putting a single crochet into the top of the very last stitch. Now, that should have straightened that row out, you know, a little bit better. Now what I'm gonna do is tie off, but I'm gonna tie off with a long tail because whenever I make a cowl, I like to sew it so it doesn't come undone. Now, if you don't like uh, it sewn, you know, you like maybe you like it where you can do it different ways, you know, you, don't, you won't need a long tail. Um, but I left a long tail. So now I'm going to show you how we make it a, a cowl. So, got this big piece here. All right, so what we want to do is you take this side here and fold it. Now it's going to have, it helps to fold the collar at the top down. It just takes a little bit of fiddling around with it here to get it right. And then, so you can see that this part's folded kind of like that. See that? And then we're going to take this side over here and bring it over. And it's act this, this end over here is going to line up with this one. So we're going to bring it over like that. Like that. So... And that's how it's folded. Let me go ahead and show you one more time. It's my long tail there in the way. All right, so you got uh, both sides look the same, so it really doesn't matter which side you fold it on. Take the side over here and fold it um, just a little bit. And like I like I said, fold it down like that. About I guess about halfway maybe. It helps to fold the collar part. You can adjust it later, but it just helps in the folding process. Like that. Okay. And this piece on this end is going to flip over and attach to here. That's where I'm going to sew it to. Remember, you don't have to sew it if you don't want to. So just like that. Like I said, you'll need to to get it lined up, you know, the way that you want it. But just that's how you that's how you do it. And you just kind of fiddle around with it until it's all evened up. Now remember, if you don't want to sew it, that is fine. What you can do at this point is um, you can sew some buttons if you want. It would you would want to sew them to the inside here like this. And then you can use these holes as the button holes. You could do one big one, or you could do like three down it, or five down it, however you want to do that. Um, and that way, you know, you could take it on and off. You could use, if you don't want to permanently sew it, you could use some type of brooch to pin it up here like that. Now, if you want to, and that way you can take it off, you know, permanent, or take it off and design it different ways, however you want. 
But for these, like I said, I like to sew them so they're permanently like this. And then it just you can just slip it on and off your head. And you don't have to try to fiddle around with it anymore. It's sewn in place. And you don't have to, you know, try spending time dealing with trying to get it folded correctly every time. But that's just me. So I let that long tail. And what I'm going to do is use my yarn needle. And I will just neatly sew down this side. And then neatly... As you can look, you look under here, once it's lined up correctly, I'm trying to sh hold my camera one-handed without making anybody sick with my camera skills. And then, uh, like I said, neatly sew down this side with my yarn needle and then this side with my yarn needle until you get to this end piece down here where we started. See that? But you want to make sure that you don't sew any of this underneath part there. Okay, just this side and then this side. Don't get any of this or it won't go over your head. So let me get mine uh, situated how I want it and then I'll show you kind of how I neatly sew it up. All right, remember, you don't have to do the sewing thing. You can add buttons or a pin and you know, you'd be done with it. Um, and then you can just unfold it and fold it each time. But I like the perma so. <laughs> so remember, make sure you don't get any of this back piece here. We just want to make sure because that's the part that's going to fold over your head. I just take it and grab a piece from the top here and the piece from the bottom. Now I don't do a wrap around. I go back and forth right along the edges and just kind of neatly sew it up the best that I can and this way I don't have to, like I said I, uh, I don't have to fix it every time it'll slip on and off your head and it'll always be in the same you know same spot only thing you might have to adjust would be the collar on it you know fold it down but other than that it's pretty much stay in the same spot so I'm going to go all the way down sewing it like this until I get to the points. Make sure the points match up there. And then I'm going to sew up this side until I get to this last piece here. Right there. Remember not to sew up any of your part that's going to go over your head. And then I'll see you here in just a second. Alright, and here it is on my beautiful bus form. Her name is Amber. So... I did just put a brush for decoration. So this is all sewn and it won't come undone. Never mind my mess over there. I'm going to stop. But yeah, this is what it starts. This is what it looks like. Um, and I'll show you how easy it is to take it um, on and off here. All right. When taking it off, I'm going to tell you right now, her wig's probably going probably gonna to fall off when I take it off. But all you do is just slide it right over your head. Just like that. And... There it is. It's still in the same shape because we sewed it. But remember, that is not necessary, the sewing part. But there it is. Then you're going to slide it on and off if you're going to wear it out and about uh, when it's cold out. Otherwise, you can do the unbutton thing and button it back up each time. Both times, it's going to be beautiful. So, I hope you enjoy my tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Um, and leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. And if you look in the description box, there's going to be a link to well over a thousand crochet tutorials. They're all free for you to enjoy. I have anything that you could ever want to make and multiples of them. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.